Being locked in close proximity with your co-workers can lead to mounting tensions. For example, if I have to hear one more time Jack the Jobber sing the Hello Mr. Sandwich song to his lunch before he eats it, I'm going to put his slightly enlarged head through the f***ing wall. Dutch Mantel, aka Zeb Coulter, realised that wrestlers need a way to police each other, settle backstage arguments and let off steam, otherwise they will kill each other. So he set up Wrestlers Court, a kangaroo court to settle grievances in the locker room. It acted independent of management. The Undertaker was often the judge, JBL was often the prosecution, and woe betide anyone who found themselves suiting up for a trial. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are the 10 best WWE tales from Wrestlers Court. Number 10, Hardcore Legend versus Hardcore Holly. Of all the people you want to leave stranded at an airport, Bob Holly is not one of them. Look at him. He looks like he's about to pull off your ears with his teeth. Anyway, the story is that Mick Foley and Al Snow, those fun-loving scamps that they are, wanted to go to a carnival in Austin and invited Hardcore Holly along. Because, after all, this is a face that says fun fair. They'd all then drive onto the next city in Foley's car. Long story short, they left Bob Holly at the airport, forcing him to re-rent his car and drive on alone. For their crimes, the knucklehead twins were going to be hauled in front of wrestler's court. To escape punishment, they settled out of court, with the famously cheap McFoley being forced to pay for Holly's car and two days travel expenses. All of that over a carnival. Number 9, Edge and Christian's Toys. Edge and Christian, the chuckling Canucks with all the yucks, enjoyed a featured spot on Raw for many years with juicy heel material and storylines courtesy of their resident staff writer Brian Gerwitz. How do they keep him sweet and make sure he always gave them A-grade stuff? They bought him action figures to add to his collection. When the locker room found out about this breach of protocol, they were taken to Wrestler's Court, where The Undertaker told them what he thought of them using all of his favourite four-letter words. Their sentence? Buying booze for all the veterans, including a bottle of Jack Daniels for Taker, cases of beer for JBL and Ron Simmons, and protein powder for Bob Holly. Again, because Bob Holly's really fun. Look at his fun face. Number 8, the Hardy Steel Cane Seat. More poor rambunctious tag youths getting themselves into hot water and the Hardy Boys, those sexy teens with attitude. The Hardys had just won their first ever tag team championships and were celebrating with their then manager, Michael P.S. Hayes, who wrote the book on partying and then fought the book because he was wasted. The three men got on a plane at the end of the night and Hayes decided they'd have first class seats because they were the f***ing champions. Woo. One of those seats, Jeff Hardy's seat, belonged to Kane. Oh, very dear. Actually, Kane was fine with it. When Jeff Hardy tried to give him back his seat, he waved him off and found a seat in coach. But the veterans were furious with the idea of the newcomers appropriating his first-class seat. And the duo were hauled in front of wrestlers' court, their sentence being playing a prank. They had to damage Don Callis' rental car because the man known as the Jackal had major heat of his own backstage. Number 7, Dodgeball Gets Real. Ah yes, the Divas Dodgeball match at SummerSlam 2004. You can't spell waste of my goddamn time without Divas Dodgeball. It was a Divas locker room versus the contestants of that year's Divas Search. Problem was, they filmed it as a shoot match and the Divas Search ladies won. So a team comprised of models and non-athletes bested the entirety of the women's roster, did they? Oh no. This made the male locker room a bit narked. The Divas were called into wrestlers' court, prosecuted by, of all people, Val Venus. This sounds like how one of his special movies starts. Triple H was the judge for this one and shouted at all the women for their betrayal of the super serious art of wrestling. Here is a quick picture of Triple H during the Katie Vick angle. Super serious. The charges were dropped after the Divas bought Triple H a present. There's not much justice in the world. Number six, Melina gets shamed. Continuing the theme of Divas getting themselves into trouble with the tale of Melina, who seemed to have been a one woman heat machine, rubbing everyone up the wrong way except Batista, allegedly. Hi, oh! I'm sorry, John Morrison, you're really great. She had backstage feuds with pretty much the entire female locker room, taking her role of diva way too literally. When she was finally pulled in front of court at 3am in the wrestlers hotel, the entire locker room, men and women, turned out to watch a bunch of veterans shout at her until she cried. The wrestlers even took bets at how long it would take her to blub, which actually, to be honest, is a bit... Yeah. Number 5, Matt Stryker lucks his way out. Anyone who's ever heard Matt Stryker's commentary will know that the dude likes to talk. He has a slightly obnoxious air to him, which he attributes to the fact that he's a slightly awkward person. I'm sure he's a lovely fellow, but when he began his career in 2005, he rubbed everyone in the locker room right up the wrong way. And not like Melina rubbed Batista. No, hang on. I Let's just... 
I now I've got that image in my mind of Matt Stryker. And, but also, he once said that the SmackDown locker room was worse than Raw's locker room, and boy, that didn't help. So he was hauled in front of court, taking his abuse from JBL. However, when the Texan prosecutor said that he could easily take Stryker outside and kick his ass, thinking that was the sentence, a resigned Stryker stood up to take his punishment. This was misconstrued as the troubled teacher standing up for himself, and JBL actually backed down. And just like that, the beef evaporated which is a great name for a band. Number four, The Miz and His Chicken. From beef to chicken, and oh, The Miz. Gosh, people really hated The Miz. He broke into wrestling via reality TV, which is one way to book a direct flight to Heat Island. Basically, the locker room were aching for an opportunity to punish this young scrot, and they were handed a juicy one when The Miz ate some chicken in a clumsy manner, getting crumbs into the gym bag of Chris Benoit. Oh, you done f up. He was taken to court and his punishment was not being allowed to change in the locker rooms with the rest of the guys for six months, being forced to change in the toilets. At one point, he even had to use the public toilets to change with people pointing him out and saying, wait, is that The Miz? Number three, Teddy Long is cheap. Now, despite what you think, most wrestlers don't actually earn that much money. Sure, John Cena lives in a palace and has more ugly, 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 ugly suits than he knows what to do with, but the average mid-carder has a huge chunk of his wage cut into by the fact that WWE stars are independent contractors who have to pay for their own rental cars, hotels, and food. Also, the tax man. And considering that wrestlers have to eat five times a day because this meat don't maintain itself, that cuts a huge amount of their salary down. As such, many wrestlers get thrifty, but none were more legendarily cheap than Teddy Long, who would do anything he could to get out of paying his share, even pretending to be asleep in the car whenever they came to a toll station. His cheapness finally got him into wrestler's court, where weirdly Mae Young defended him because she thought that he had been accused of buying Viagra. It was a weird situation. Anyway, he was sentenced to pay for the APA's chicken and beer for a whole month. This is what the APA looks like. That is a lot of chicken and beer. Number two, Muhammad Hassan has no friends. We've covered Muhammad Hassan and his doomed push before, but not perhaps what happened to him backstage. See, Hassan was pushed like a superstar in his short career, sharing the ring with HBK, Hogan, Foley, Lawler, Jericho, Benoit, Batista, Undertaker, Cena, all in a short space of time. He was hazed mercilessly backstage, either because he was a prima donna or because of jealousy. He was shaken to wrestler's court, not once, but twice, once for no selling offense from Sergeant Slaughter, which he may have been told to do by management, and the second time for telling off Eddie Guerrero for using the camel clutch, Hassan's finisher at the time. Of course, Eddie was a veteran, and his dad, Gory Guerrero, had, you know, invented the move, so back to court we go. On his second trip, he was sentenced to paying the entire locker room's $4,000 bar bill for the night. And number one, Goldberg is put in his place. Goldberg's run with the company did not go smoothly. Not only did it end with one of the worst WrestleMania matches of all time, but he had a pretty humiliating trial in Wrestler's Court. See, Goldberg and Chris Jericho already had beef from their time in WCW, where Goldie refused to work with Jericho, a cruiserweight nobody. So when Goldberg made it to WWE and badmouthed Jericho to Kevin Nash, Jericho squared up. In the tussle that ensued, Jericho locked Goldberg in a front face lock and kept it cinched in until they were separated. Goldberg was taken to court for the encounter and Triple H, the judge this time, tore him a new one and gave him a horrific punishment. He had to publicly apologize to Jericho and admit that he had always been the better wrestler. Ouch. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.